myself mrs maya pramod pgt chemistry from kv number 2 agra camp today we'll be studying about haloalkenes and haloarenes what are haloalkenes and haloarenes here we can see that from rh h gets replaced by x that is halogen this r can be either alkyl group like ch3 c2h5 or an aryl group c6h5 hence the replacement of hydrogen atom or atoms in hydrocarbon aliphatic or aromatic by halogen atom or atoms results in the formation of alkyl halide that is haloalkene and aryl halide that is haloarenes respectively now classification of halogen derivatives they are classified as follow number 1 on the basis of number of halogen atoms attached number 2 on the basis of sp3 cx bond and thirdly on the basis of sp2 cx bond now classification of halogen derivatives on the basis of number of halogen atoms here we can see ch3x only one halogen atom is present over here it is known as monohaloalkene whereas ch2x ch2x here there are two halogen atom and hence it is dihaloalkene ch2x ch2 chx and ch2x here we can see there are three halogen atoms hence it is trihaloalkene so haloalkenes are classified as mono di and tri let's see in case of haloarenes here we can see there is only one halogen atom attached to the benzene ring hence it is mono haloarene here we can see two halogen atoms are attached to the benzene ring dihaloarene and in this case three halogen atoms are attached to the benzene ring hence it is trihaloarene now compounds containing sp3 cx bond they are further classified as alkyl halides or haloalkenes where halogen is attached to sp3 hybridized carbon next one allylic halide benzylic halide let's try to understand all these three haloalkenes and haloarenes in which halogen is attached to an sp3 hybridized carbon are alkyl halides allylic halides and benzylic halides in case of alkyl halides halogen is attached to an alkyl chain whereas in case of allylic halide the halogen atom is attached to sp3 hybridized carbon which is adjacent to carbon carbon double bond or we can say sp2 hybridized carbon this is the point to be remembered for allylic halides that halogen is attached to the sp3 hybridized carbon which is adjacent to carbon carbon double bond whereas in case of benzylic halide the halogen is attached to an sp3 hybridized carbon which is attached to a benzene ring we can see these two examples where halogen is attached to the sp3 hybridized carbon adjacent to carbon carbon double bond and hence they are known as allylic halides further if we see 
these two there is one alkyl group to which halogen is directly attached this is one degree haloalkene this is two degree and here it is three degree they are alkyl halides whereas here we can see on the benzene ring halogen is attached to sp3 hybridized carbon which is attached directly to the benzene ring this is known as benzylic halide it can also be classified as 1 degree 2 degree or 3 degree depending upon the number of alkyl groups attached to the sp3 hybridized carbon now coming down to nomenclature of haloalkenes and haloenes there are two names associated with every compound the first one is common name it is different from a trivial name in the sense that it also follows a rule for its nomenclature secondly iupac name the iupac that is international union of pure and applied chemistry naming system is the standard naming system that chemists generally use let's brush up rules of nomenclature first we should find the longest carbon chain followed by number of longest carbon chains such that the carbon atom or atoms to which halogen or halogens s are attached gets the lowest number after that if multiple halogen atoms are present then multiple halogen atoms are labeled with greek numerical prefixes such as di tri tetra to denote the number of identical hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon atoms if more than one halogen atom is attached to the same carbon atom the numeral is repeated that much time after that if in case different types of halogens are attached then they are to be named alphabetically for example chloro bromo so b comes first so bromo will be named first followed by chloro in alphabetical order the position of halogen atom is indicated by writing position and name of halogen just before the name of parent hydrocarbon it means halogens are always taken as prefix the methodology of writing name first write the root word for the parent hydrocarbon depending upon the number of carbon atom in the longest carbon chain if there is only one carbon meth 2 eth 3 prop 4 bu and so on secondly calculate the number of halogen atoms present if there are multiple halogen atoms present then arrange the halogens alphabetically in the prefix labeling them with their respective positions but if the same halogen atom is present more than once then use the prefixes di tri tetra etc now let's see how to do the nomenclature of haloalkenes select the longest chain of carbon atom containing halogen atom because we are going to do the naming of haloalkene secondly the number number the chain to give the minimum number to the carbon carrying halogen atom it means numbering is to be done in such a way that carbon on which halogen atom is attached should get the lowest number 
if multiple bonds that is double or triple bond is present then it is given the preference in numbering the carbon chain the iupac name of any halogen derivative is always written as one word here we can see the table for example the compound ch3cl which is commonly known as methyl chloride but its iupac name is chloromethene similarly in the second example we can see its ethyl bromide but iupac name is bromoethene you can go through this table now nomenclature of haloaryls aryl halides are named by prefixing halo to the name of at parent aromatic hydrocarbon if there is more than one substituent on the ring then the relative positions of substituents are indicated by mathematical numerals in common system the relative position of two group is shown by prefix ortho meta here are few examples first this is chlorobenzene second bromobenzene third iodobenzene fourth we can see that two bromo groups are present so it is named as 1 to dibromobenzene or ortho dibromobenzene similarly in fifth we can see that chloro groups are attached at 1 and 3 position hence it is known as 1 3 dichlorobenzene or meta benzene in sixth case chloro group is present at first and fourth position so iupac name is 1,4 dichlorobenzene or we can say para dichlorobenzene in case of seventh example here we see chloro group is present on the benzene ring but benzene ring with ch3 this is known as toline and hence it is known as 3 chloro toline or meta chloro toline this is the another case where it is named as phenyl bromomethane the bromo group is attached to this carbon ch2 hence this is the parent chain it becomes bromomethane and on this first carbon phenyl group is attached hence it is known as phenyl bromobenzene sorry phenyl bromomethene or benzyl bromide nature of cx bond here we can see that halogen being electronegative in nature it attracts the shared pair of electron between carbon and halogen and hence there is development of partial positive charge on the carbon and partial negative charge on the halogen so the points on the nature of cx bond that we should keep in our mind is number 1 the cx bond is polar number 2 only one sigma bond is formed between one carbon and one halogen atom thirdly the cx bond length increases from fluorine to astatine and bond dissociation energy decreases because of increase in the size of halogen atom the electronegativity of halogen decreases down the group so the dipole moment also decreases here we can see now what are various methods of preparation of haloalkenes and haloaryls from this flow chart it is very clear haloalkenes they can be prepared from alcohols alkenes 
alkanes and by halogen exchange method whereas haloarenes they are prepared by electrophilic substitution sand meyer reaction and getman reaction let's study one methods of preparation of halo alkene first preparation of alkyl halides from alcohol alcohols they react with pcl3 on heating to give halo alkene along with phosphorus acid and hcl as by product it also reacts with pcl5 to give halo alkene but the by product is pocl3 and hcl with pbr3 it gives bromoalkene with phosphorus acid and hbr the most common method used is heating of alcohol with socl2 to get haloalkene because here so2 and hcl are the gaseous by product so separation becomes easier now alcohol reacts with halogen acid in presence of anhydrous chloride to give halo alkene lastly alcohol reacts with nax that is sodium halide in presence of sulfuric acid to give halo alkene sodium bisulfate and water second method for preparation of alkyl halide is by free radical halogenation here alkenes they are treated with halogen especially cl2 in presence of ultraviolet radiation to get chloro alkene third preparation of alkyl halides from alkenes now alkenes can be symmetrical or unsymmetrical symmetrical alkene means where doubly bonded carbon has equal number of hydrogen atom so if it is symmetrical alkene there is no problem it reacts with halogen acid to give alkyl halide in case of asymmetric alkene the markovnikov addition reaction take place that is when a proteic acid hx is added to an asymmetric alkene negative part of addendum that is cl br or i joins with carbon atom which carries the smaller number of hydrogen atom and positive part h goes to the carbon atom which has more hydrogen already you have studied this mechanism in your 11th class here we can see addition of hbr to propene gives rise to two product two bromopropene as major product and one bromopropene as minor product but when hbr is added in presence of per side then it follows anti markovnikov addition reaction that is when hbr is added to unsymmetrical alkenes in presence of peroxide one bromopropene is the major product here you can see propene reacts with hbr in presence of peroxide to give one bromopropene and anti markovnikov's addition reaction is not applicable to hcl or the next method is by halogen exchange method finkelstein reaction in this rx reacts with nai to give ri plus nax in presence of dry acetone alkyl iodides are prepared by the reaction of alkyl chlorides or bromides with nai in dry acetone and this is finkelstein reaction now we can see rx can be converted into rf that is fluoro derivative 
and this reaction takes place in the presence of either AgF, Hg2F2, CoF2 or SbF3. This reaction is known as Schwarz reaction. Alkyl fluorides can be prepared by heating alkyl chlorides or bromides in the presence of metallic fluorides such as silver fluoride, Hg2F2, CoF2 or SpF3. Here X is either chloride or bromide. Methods of preparation of haloarenes. Haloarenes can be prepared by electrophilic substitution. Aryl chlorides and bromides can be easily prepared by electrophilic substitution of arenes with chlorine and bromine respectively in presence of Lewis acid catalyst like iron or iron 3 chloride. Here we can see toluene when treated with halogen in presence of iron as catalyst in dark it gives orthohalotoluene and parahalotoluene out of which parahalotoluene is the major product and this is often asked what happens when or complete the reaction. Next is diazotization reaction. In this reaction, aniline reacts with NaNO2 and halogen acid at 273 to 278 Kelvin or we can say in presence of ice cold water to give benzene disonium halide. This benzene disonium halide when treated with CO2X2 in presence of halogen acid, it gives haloarene along with elimination of nitrogen and this is known as sand mayer reaction. Whereas when benzene disonium chloride or halide is treated with copper powder and halogen acid, we get Haloarene along with elimination of nitrogen, but this reaction is known as Gatterman reaction. Now, physical properties of haloalkanes. Physical properties of any compound depends largely on its mass, the type of intramolecular and intramolecular force of attraction. Color. Alkyl halides are colorless when pure. However, bromides and iodides develop color when exposed to light. Many volatile halogen compounds have sweet smell. State. Methyl chloride, methyl bromide, ethyl chloride and some of chlorofluoromethanes are gases at room temperature. Higher members are liquid or solids. Density Bromo, iodo and polychloro derivatives of hydrocarbons are heavier than water and density increases with increase in the number of carbon atoms. Solubility of haloalkanes in water Haloalkanes are slightly soluble in water because Less energy is released when new attraction are set up between haloalkane and the water molecules as these are not as strong as the original hydrogen bond in water. Or simply we can say higher haloalkanes are insoluble because they don't form hydrogen bond with water. Here we can see this haloalkane when it interacts with water molecule, the energy released is too low as compared to the water molecules. Because here we can see there is hydrogen bond in the water molecule which is more stronger. Boiling point and melting point. 
it depends upon greater polarity higher molecular mass as compared to parent hydrocarbon the intramolecular forces of attraction that is dipole dipole and van der waal are stronger chain or branching here we can see this example this is bromo butane two bromo butane and two bromo two methyl propene here we can very well see that boiling point of normal bromo butane is 375 as that of two bromo butane is 364 kelvin and two bromo two methyl propane is 346 in case of first and third one we can see the branching has taken place because of which the surface area decreases and hence the intramolecular force of attraction also decreases resulting in decrease in the boiling point in case of dihaloenes we can very well see that the boiling point and melting point of para dihalobenzene is more as compared to ortho and meta it is because of symmetry of the para isomer that fits in crystal lattice better as compared to ortho and meta isomer this is methane molecule one hydrogen gets replaced by fluorine chlorine bromine iodine hence we can say fluoromethane chloromethane bromomethane and iodomethane are formed here we can see the size of halogen atom is different it is increasing from fluorine to iodine so boiling point of alkyl halides it increases if alkyl group is same from fluoro to iodo and this is because with increase in the size and the mass of halogen atom the magnitude of van der waal force increases this becomes one reasoning question now coming down to chemical reactions three types of chemical reactions are there reaction with metal nucleophilic substitution elimination reaction one by one we will try to understand this first reaction with sodium metal here you can see alkyl halide reacts with sodium metal in presence of dry ether to give alkene with even number of carbon and this reaction is known as wood's reaction we can see alkyl halide it reacts with sodium in dry ether to give hydrocarbon containing double the number of carbon atom present in alkyl halide say for example if it is methyl chloride because of wood's reaction we will get ethene if it is ethyl chloride we will get butene here you can see the example now significance of wood's reaction as we see the carbon atom number of carbon atom becomes double and hence it is used for ascending the series that is for increasing the number of carbon atom in the chain secondly to prepare alkenes from alkyl halides with even number of carbon or we can say symmetrical alkene here you can see 
2 chloropropene it reacts with sodium metal in presence of pure and dry ether to get 2 free dimethyl butyl now if we use two different alkyl halides then we will get mixture of various alkenes and their separation becomes difficult so alkene with odd number of carbon cannot be prepared easily in woods fatigue reaction alkyl halide reacts with haloerene in presence of sodium in dry ether to give alkyl substituted benzene significance of this reaction is that we are able to prepare alkyl substituted benzene for example methyl chloride reacts with chlorobenzene in presence of sodium metal and dry ether to give toluene now reaction with magnesium metal alkyl halide reacts with magnesium metal in dry ether to give rngx which is commonly known as grignard reagent here is the example bromoethene reacts with magnesium in presence of dry ether to give grignard grignard reagent rmgx magnesium has partial positive charge alkyl group partial negative and halogen partial negative charge now here the rmgx bond it is polar covalent bond whereas mgx bond is ionic bond now grignard reagents they are highly reactive and react with any source of proton to give hydrocarbon hence grignard reagent should always be prepared in anhydrous condition grignard reagent plus water it will give alkene grignard reagent with alcohol it will again give alkene grignard reagent with primary amine again it will give alkene so in order to prepare pure grignard reagent the condition should be anhydrous but of course if we want to convert grignard reagent into alkene then any of these three method we can the second type of reaction shown by alkyl halide is elimination reaction elimination reaction is a type of reaction mainly used to transform saturated compounds to unsaturated compounds that is organic compound which contains carbon carbon single bond are converted into organic compounds having either double or triple carbon carbon bond there are two main methods involved in this type of reaction that is elimination reaction number 1 dehydration as the name suggests water is eliminated dehydrohalogenation in which hydrogen and halogen is eliminated here is the equation there is the elimination of water molecule mostly from compounds such as alcohol in presence of dehydrating agent like sulfuric acid here we can see that chloroethene when heated with alcoholic naoh or koh results in formation of alkene and one hydrogen and halogen is eliminated 
we are mainly concerned with dehydrohalogenation reaction in this chapter when haloalkene with beta hydrogen atom is heated with alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide there is elimination of hydrogen atom from beta carbon and a halogen atom from alpha carbon atom and is known as dehydro halogenation let's try to understand what is beta carbon and beta hydrogen and alpha carbon here you can see the carbon to which halogen is attached directly that carbon is known as alpha carbon and the carbon on which hydrogen is there but it is adjacent to the carbon having halogen that is known as beta carbon and hydrogen is known as beta hydrogen so halogen from alpha carbon and hydrogen from beta carbon gets eliminated as hx and alkene is formed hence it is also known as beta elimination reaction now here you can see there are two beta hydrogen question arises what will be the product it's but natural alkene will be formed but which alkene will be major product let us see this reaction takes place on heating in presence of alcoholic koh here we can see the one product is 2 pentene the another product is 1 pentene because there are two beta hydrogen but the major product is 2 pentene or pent 2 in whereas pent 1 in is the minor product now why this is happening because in dehydrohalogenation reaction the preferred product is that alkene which has greater number of alkyl groups attached to the doubly bonded carbon atom and this is known as sedgsiff rule so according to sedgsiff rule if there are two beta hydrogen and elimination takes place then the alkene having maximum number of alkyl groups attached to the doubly bonded carbon is the major product the next type of reaction shown by alkyl halides are nucleophilic substitution reaction question arises what are nucleophiles so nucleophiles are electron rich species for example cn negative oh negative i negative etc we can see here in this equation the carbon and halogen bond is polar in nature carbon has partial positive charge and halogen partial negative charge a nucleophile attacks the halogen which is having a partial positive charge on the carbon atom bonded to halogen and halide ion separates following a substitution reaction now the reactivity of haloalkenes towards nucleophilic substitution reaction can be understood by taking an example for the same alkyl group as we move from chlorine to iodine the strength of cx bond decreases why because the size increases from from fluorine to iodine and the reactivity order 
is as follow ri becomes more reactive than rbr which is more reactive than rcl which is in turn more reactive than rf here we have a table showing formation of products on the basis of a nucleophile we can see in this table reagents are there along with the type of nucleophile that they will produce and the compound which will be formed this table is very helpful in carrying out various conversions now one important question that comes is kcl reacts with alkyl halide to give cyanides whereas agcn it gives isocyanides the reason is very simple it is acn is ionic whereas agcn is covalent ambient nucleophiles they are the nucleophiles having two nucleophilic sites thus ambient nucleophiles have two sites through which they can attack for example no2 where attack is possible through nitrogen as well as oxygen which can be seen from their resonating structure cn negative through c as well as through n scn through sulfur as well as through nitrogen so isocyanides cyanides and nitrites are example of ambient nucleophile having two nucleophilic sites for example nitrite ion can attack through oxygen resulting in the formation of alkyl nitrites or nitro alkenes here we can see nitrite when attacked through oxygen forms alkyl nitrite or nitro alkene is formed when it is attacked through nitrogen nucleophilic substitution reactions are of two types sn1 reaction and sn2 reaction sn1 reaction it is a two step reaction where the carbon halogen bond breaks heterolytically with with the halogen retaining the previously shared pair of electron the nucleophile reacts rapidly with the carbocation that was formed in the first step hence it's a two step reaction whereas in sn2 reaction the nucleophile attacks positively charged carbon and halogen leaves the group this occurs simultaneously sn1 reaction involves two step in step 1 the bond between carbon and halogen breaks due to presence of a nucleophile and formation of carbocation takes place it is the slowest and the reversible step as huge amount of energy is required to break the bond the bond is broken by solvation of compound in a protic solvent thus this step is the slowest of all 
and is the rate determining step. The rate of reaction depends only on haloalkane, not on nucleophile. In step 2, the nucleophile attacks the carbocation formed in step 1 and a new compound is formed. Since the rate-defining rate step of reaction is the formation of carbocation, hence greater the stability of formation of an intermediate carbocation, more is the ease of compound undergoing substitution nucleophilic unimolecular or SN1. In case of alkyl halides, 3 degree alkyl halides undergo SN1 reaction very fast because of high stability of 3 degree carbocation. Hence, allylic and benzylic halides show high reactivity towards SN1 reaction. We can see this equation where tertiary alkyl halide undergoes heterolytic fission in order to form carbocation and is the slowest step. In the second step, this carbocation 3 degree carbocation which is the most stable one. OH ion that is nucleophile attacks on the carbocation resulting in the formation of substituted product. Now the order of reactivity is CH3X that is 1 degree alkyl halide less reactive than R2CHX 2 degree alkyl halide which is less reactive than R3CX 3 degree alkyl halide. Hence, we can say 1 degree is less reactive than 2 degree less reactive than 3 degree. Because 3 degree carbocation is the most stable one and hence it is the most reactive one. In case of SN2 reaction, both the formation of carbocation and exiting of halogen takes place simultaneously. In this process, unlike the inversion of configuration observed, since this reaction requires the approach of nucleophile to the carbon bearing the living drug. The presence of bulky substituents on or near the carbon atom has a dramatic inhibiting effect. It is always favored mostly by primary carbon, then secondary and then tertiary because the primary carbon has least bulky group because of which the attack of nucleophile is here we can see this equation. The attack of nucleophile on the carbon attached to the halogen results in the formation of making of a new bond between nucleophile and carbon and breaking of bond between carbon and halogen. The halogen it leaves and product is formed. Here just see the configuration and when product is formed, inversion of configuration takes place. Order of reactivity is Primary alkyl halide that is CH3X more reactive than secondary R2CHX more reactive than R3CX that is 3 degree. So 1 degree is more reactive than 2 degree more reactive than 3 degree because 
In 2 degree and 3 degree due to presence of alkyl group, the bulkiness increases around the carbon and the attack of nucleophile becomes difficult. So it is more faster in case of 1 degree alkyl halide. Now let's compare SN1 and SN2 reaction. Here is the table. Rate law for SN1 is unimolecular. For SN2, bimolecular. Number of steps involved in SN1 are 2. In SN2, it is 1. Haloalkane reactivity is in the order of 3 degree more reactive than 2 degree more reactive than 1 degree in case of SN1 and 3 degree less reactive than 2 degree less reactive than 1 degree in case of SN2. SN1 takes place in presence of polar protic solving whereas SN2 takes place in the presence of polar aprotic solvent. Nucleophile involved is weak in case of SN1 and strong in case of SN2. Talking about stereochemistry which we will be taking later on. A mix of retention and inversion takes place. Whereas in SN2 only inversion takes place. Now some important terms related to stereochemistry. The first is plane polarized light. The plane polarized light consists of waves in which the direction of vibration is the same for all waves. Let's see how you can see here. The randomly oriented line where it is in all the direction. But after passing through polarizing filter, it starts vibrating only in one direction and this is known as plain polarized light. Second, optical activity is the ability of a substance to rotate the plane of polarization of a beam of light that passes through it through certain angle. Here we can see the plane polarized light can rotate either in clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction. This is known as optical activity. Here we can see that these two figures are the mirror image of each other. Now, the left hand and the right hand, they are mirror image, but they cannot be superimposed. And hence, such objects whose mirror images are non-superimposable are known as chiral object. Whereas, in case of conical flask, we can see that their mirror image is superimposable. Such objects are known as achiral objects. Similarly, in organic compound, the carbon, which is tetravalent in nature, if all the four valences are satisfied by four different groups, then that is chiral carbon. Chirality means mirror images which are non-superimposable molecules. Here we can see by the attack of nucleophile substrate changes into product. We can see the configuration of substrate and product which is seen. Hence, retention in configuration means that the symmetry of substrate before and after the reaction is In this 
equation we can see that in substrate the configuration is different but when product is formed due to attack of nucleophile the configuration gets inverted and this is sn2 reaction so inversion means the spatial rearrangement of atom or groups of atoms in a dissymmetric molecule giving rise to a product with a molecular configuration that is a mirror image of the original molecule here we can see this is sn1 reaction in this case formation of carbocation takes place and due to attack from either front or back there is formation of 50-50% product where retention and inversion takes place and as a result optical activity gets cancelled out and such mixture is known as racemic mixture and the process is racemization hence we can say racemization is the conversion of optically active substance into an optically inactive mixture of equal amount of dextro and levo rotatory forms now stereochemical aspect of nucleophilic substitution reactions after going through the important terms associated with stereochemical aspect as you can see this is sn2 reaction where inversion of configuration takes place so sn2 reaction always results in inversion of the configuration whereas in case of sn1 reaction we can see it occurs through the formation of carbocation so there are chances of inversion as well as retention of configuration and hence 50-50 ratio of mixture is available which is known as racemic mixture we can see a sn2 reaction proceeds with complete stereochemical inversion while a sn1 reaction proceeds with racemization after studying reaction of haloalkenes let's go through reaction of haloarenes it shows nucleophilic substitution electrophilic substitution reaction and reaction with metals aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reaction due to following reason and this becomes one of the important reasoning question so we need to understand first one is resonance effect now here we can see the various resonating structures of chlorobenzene because of resonating structure or resonance there is development of a partial double bond between cl and the carbon of the benzene ring as a result the bond becomes shorter and stronger and hence it is difficult to break so they are less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reaction second reason for being less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution of haloarenes is difference in hybridization of carbon atom in cx bond here 
we can see in case of haloarene the halogen is attached to sp2 hybrid carbon whereas in case of haloalkene halogen is attached to sp3 hybrid carbon because of which in case of haloarene the carbon with the greater s character is more electronegative and can hold the electron pair of cx bond more tightly as a result the ccl bond length is 169 picometer which is smaller and stronger hence there is difficulty to break a bond which is shorter in case of haloalkene carbon with lesser s character is less electronegative and cannot hold the electron pair of cx bond more tightly as a result ccl bond length is 177 picometer which is more than that of ccl bond of halo erin and is longer hence it is easy to break a longer bond in comparison to shorter bond so halo alkenes becomes more reactive towards nucleophilic substitution in comparison to halo erin third reason is the instability of phenyl ketan phenyl ketan is formed as a result of self ionization will not be stabilized by the resonance here this is the phenyl ketan carbon having positive charge which is present on the electronegative sp2 hybridized carbon atom fourthly due to possible electronic repulsion we can see nucleophile they are electron rich species and the halogen it has lone pair electron so there is possibility of repulsion between electron rich nucleophile and electron rich erenes hence reactivity towards nucleophilic substitution by halo erene however under drastic condition chlorobenzene reacts with naoh at 623 kelvin and 3 atmosphere 300 atmosphere to form sodium phenoxide ion which in presence of proton forms phenol this is also a method for conversion of chlorobenzene into phenol we can see dinitrochlorobenzene in presence of naoh and acid it undergoes substitution reaction this is the another example where trinitrochlorobenzene on warming with water results in the formation of trinitrophenol electrophilic substitution reactions are shown by halo erenes this can be understood by looking at the various resonating structures of halo erene we can see the lone pair electron of halo erene gets involved in resonance which results in an excess of electron or negative charge over ortho and para positions of the ring rather than meta position thus 
हेलो एरिंग्स आर ऑर्थो एंड पैरा डायरेक्टिव टुवर्ड्स इलेक्ट्रोफिलिक सब्सटीट्यूशन इट मींस ऑर्थो एंड पैरा पोजीशन ऑफ द बेंजीन रिंग एक्ट्स एज न्यूक्लियोफिलिक सेंटर ऑन व्हिच इलेक्ट्रोफाइल अटैक्स इजीली व्हिच इज इलेक्ट्रॉन लविंग स्पेस here are some reactions showing electrophilic substitution we can see chlorobenzene when treated with chlorine in presence of n hydrous fecl3 it results in formation of 1,4 dichlorobenzene which is a major product and 1,2 dichlorobenzene is the minor product now why 1,4 dichlorobenzene is major product because of its symmetry that is better fitted in the crystal lattice and this is known as halogenation reaction chlorobenzene also reacts with concentrated nitric acid in presence of concentrated h2so4 to give 1 chloro 4 nitrobenzene and 1 chloro 2 nitrobenzene where again 1 chloro 4 nitrobenzene is the major product and this is known as nitration reaction chlorobenzene when heated with concentrated h2so4 results in formation of 4 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid which is the major product and 2 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid which is the minor product since so3h gets substituted this is known as sulfonation in woods fatigue reaction alkyl halide reacts with haloerene in presence of sodium in dry ether to give alkyl substituted benzene significance of this reaction is that we are able to prepare alkyl substituted benzene for example methyl chloride reacts with chlorobenzene in presence of sodium metal and dry ether to give toluene polyhalogen compounds dichloromethene methylene chloride formula is ch2cl ch2cl it is used as solvent paint remover propellant in aerosol process solvent in the manufacture of drugs it is used as metal cleaning and finishing solvent but human beings can be adversely affected when exposed to methylene chloride it causes harm to human mental health human exposure to even lower levels of methylene chloride in air can lead to dizziness nausea tingling numbness in fingers and toes etc direct exposure to methylene chloride can cause intense burning and mild redness in the skin cornea of eye can be adversely burnt on direct exposure to methylene chloride so it needs to be handled carefully the second polyhalogen compound is trichloromethene commonly known as chloroform formula is chcl3 chloroform is a sweet smelling heavy and colorless liquid it has low boiling point of 61 degree it is insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvent if it is inhaled it causes unconsciousness it is used as anesthetic because when pure chloroform is inhaled it affects the heart due to which after mixing with ether and other suitable anesthetics chloroform can be used as anesthetic
Chloroform on oxidation in air leads to the formation of phosgene, which is a poisonous gas. Please remember phosgene, a poisonous gas due to which it should be stored in dark colored bottle and this becomes one of the reasoning question that why chloroform is always stored in a dark colored bottle to prevent us oxidation and formation of phosgene gas. This is the answer. Here we can see the equation CHCl3 with half O2 gets oxidized to COCl2 which is phosgene gas plus HCl and this phosgene gas is poisonous in nature. Before using chloroform as anesthetic, it is tested with AgNO3. Poisonous chloroform gives white precipitate with AgNO3. Now here also this AgNO3 can be used to test the presence of chloroform next is triiodomethane commonly known as iodoform chi3 is the formula they are used as antiseptic due to the liberation of free iodine it is not because of iodoform itself but due to the offensive smell it was replaced by some other solution that contains tetrachloromethane also known as carbon tetrachloride formula CCL4 they are used in the manufacturing of refrigerants and propellants for aerosol cans they are also used for synthesis of chlorofluorocarbon pharmaceuticals etc it was extensively used as cleansing agent in industry and as degreasing agent at home as well. It is also used as a spot remover and fire extinguisher. The exposure of CCL4 can adversely affect the heartbeat and make it beat irregularly or make it permanently stuck. Exposure to eyes can cause irritation Exposure to atmosphere can lead ozone depletion that may lead to the rise in the level of exposure to ultraviolet rays. This in turn leads to increased risk of skin cancer, eye diseases and other disorders as well as weakened immune system. Freons commonly known as chlorofluorocarbon. We can see here there are two types of freon, freon 11 and freon 12. Freon 11 is CFCl3 whereas freon 12 is CCl2F2. The chlorofluorocarbon compounds of methane and ethanes are jointly known as freon. They are very stable non-corrosive, non-toxic and unreactive liquefiable gas. Freon 12 that is CCL2F2 is most commonly used freons in industrial sector. Freons are manufactured from tetrachloromethane using Swartz reaction which you have already studied. Freons are extensively used in aerosol propellant, refrigerants and air conditions. The last polyhalogen compound is commonly known as DDT. Dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane. This is the structure of DDT. DDT, DDT stands to be the first chlorinated organic insecticides originally discovered in 1873 which was then further studied and it was 1939 when Paul Muller discovered the effectiveness of DDT as an insecticide. It is highly poisonous to all living organisms 
as it does not get mobilized rapidly by animals and gets deposited and stored in the fatty tissues. Now its use has been back.